We've got a couple different positions under our belt now, but I want to take a quick second to just step back and ask why. Why are we spending so much time devoted to the modes? What is it even doing for us? It's a lot of information. It can be daunting at first. It's so much to take in. So I just want to take a quick second and kind of talk about why the modes are helpful, why you should learn them, what they can do, right? So when you break it down, there are 12 notes in all of music. In any key, seven of those notes are good, five of those notes are bad. Now, if you really want to simplify being a good guitar player, you could just say you're always hitting those seven right notes no matter what key you're in, no matter what song you're playing, you're skipping all the bad notes, right? I think learning the modes is hand positions and kind of as we've been doing, just pieces of the guitar. Like what really, really what we're doing is we're just learning different positions that are just like, you know, four frets of the guitar at a time, stepped all the way down the neck, to get a total fretboard awareness. Just learning little pieces of the puzzle that we can kind of interlock together and be able to do really anything that you want. Now, uh, one thing that we can do, so even though we've just learned a couple shapes so far, is being able to navigate through those shapes down the fretboard. Now, uh, for instance, like an example of that is if you're playing up here, right? And then maybe you're able to like take this shape down into this one, into the next one, into the next one and so on and so forth. So just being able to play through the fretboard and having these positions mentally up here is gonna help your fingers do a lot of things. A lot of guitar players get pretty fast with their fingers and what actually holds them back is just a confidence, like knowing that they're gonna be able to go to the right place. Like if you've ever maybe tried to solo something, if you're playing with another musician or something like that and it's your turn to like take a solo, uh, there might be some kind of trepidation or like hesitance in like what you're gonna do. You might get in one shape that you're comfortable with, maybe like a pentatonic thing. But then if you go outside of that shape, you might start to lose confidence that what you're gonna do is gonna be the right thing. So learning these different positions and seeing how they stack one on top of each other is a really great way to build confidence in your playing. So let's take it down to the third mode. This is called Phrygian. And Phrygian is, in my opinion, the modiest of all the modes. And what I mean by that is it, you can instantly hear how it's different, right? So we're in the key of C still. So C was Ionian, or major. Two is Dorian, which is D's mode in C. And three is gonna be E's mode, Phrygian, okay? Now, we're gonna start, even though we've been going higher up the neck, we're gonna bring it back to the open E string, right? So E's gonna be the first note of the mode. Now, to play E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, we're just gonna do this. Open one, three on the low E string. So E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, right? We're gonna actually stop at this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are gonna be our first eight notes of this mode, our first octave of the Phrygian mode. And the thing that I hear right off the bat is, that second note, one, two, right? And almost all the other modes, the first interval is gonna be a full step, which is two frets. Now there are only two modes, this one and Locrian, where right away, right off the bat, it's a half step, also called a minor second in interval terms, right? And there's something about that when you start on an E and go right to that F, it's kind of like, uh, it's like evil sounding. Like metal guys love the Phrygian mode just because of, that kind of sound, right? So when you put it all together, that's the Phrygian mode. And like we've been doing in the other videos, we've been relating that to a different mode. So this is gonna be the minor scale with a flat two or a minor second, right? So the E minor scale would be like this, open two, three, open two, three, open two. The E Phrygian scale, what makes it special is open one, three, open two, three, open two. Now again, we're just learning different positions to play the major scale throughout the entire neck of the guitar, and that's gonna be our introduction into modes. But I wanna take a second just to kinda of see how you can inflect a chord that you already know really well with this one Phrygian mode scale, however you wanna look at it. So E minor, the triad that you get from the Phrygian mode when you take the first, third, and fifth, there's gonna be an E, a G, and a B, which you probably already know is an E minor, right? You can arpeggiate that. Or play it as a chord. Now, that minor second, that flat two that we talked about, you can add that on top of an E minor chord and you can already get 
what's a Phrygian type of a feel, an atmosphere, right? So if we just have the triad, there's a dissonance, and you might even think that you're kind of going outside of the key, but really you're not. This is the sound of Phrygian. So we're taking the E minor, and we're adding the second note in the mode, and it already kind of has a totally different sound than anything else we've done so far. Now we can actually compound that by adding the one, two, three, four, five, six, the sixth note, right? So is the C. Now I'm gonna add that C on top of my chord here, right? Now if I do this, I'm really making a totally different chord. It's actually a C major seven, but we don't even need to think about it that way. We're just adding another note in this mode to a chord that we're already really familiar with. So if we just take an E minor and we go back and forth between adding the C and adding this F, we get a really dissonant Phrygian sounding riff, chord inflection, whatever you want to call it. Now, if we go across two octaves, it's gonna sound like this. We're gonna have E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now, these are just, when you're playing open chords, all the notes in the C major scale, but we're starting with an E, therefore it's the free G mode, right? Now, I wanna do this in one more position because a lot of times when you learn something with the open strings, you take them for granted and now they're helping you, right? So we're gonna root the Phrygian mode on the E on the A string, which is the seventh fret right here, okay? So the first octave is gonna be minor with a flat two. So one, two, and then just continue on through the minor scale. So here's E minor, starting here. And here's E Phrygian. So again, minor, Phrygian. And now, again, kind of how we talked about in the last video, you can see this mode hidden inside of another one, the one we started with, the Ionian mode, the major scale, the C major scale is right here. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now if we just start on the E here, C, D, E, right? Let's pretend this is our first note. So if you learn the C major scale two octaves through, which we already did, you can just start on E and finish that one scale. Therefore, you're kind of alleviating some of the memorization that comes with it, right? So again, here. So we did our first arpeggio, our first triad, our minor triad, starting on the one. Now we're not gonna use the flat two for this one because it's a one, three, five, right? A regular minor triad arpeggio. Now, if we wanted to add the seventh note, this is also gonna make another minor seven chord, just like it did in the Dorian mode and just like it did in the Aeolian or the minor mode. None of the minor modes in any key have a different, they all have the same seven, they all have a minor seven, so they all end up making the same minor seven arpeggio, right? So one, three, a minor third, five, and a minor seven. So, so that's the E minor seven arpeggio. And you can start linking these together with the other ones in the key, right? So we know that E is the Phrygian mode, we can do its arpeggio. We can go back to the Dorian mode, which is D, and then go up to an A, which is the minor mode. So those are three minor seven arpeggios that in this instance are all right next to each other. If we started on A, we just go down a string to the D, and then go up to the E. And now these can be used as replacements for any minor chord, a minor seven arpeggio.